Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna be giving you a step-by-step -step guide on how to self-host N8N. Now, what is self-hosting? Why do we care about it? Well, self-hosting just means that our N8N instance is gonna be running on a server of our choosing instead of having N8N do it on their cloud. So why do we care about this? Well, two reasons. One is it's cheaper for us to self-host. At scale, if you're using these N8N automations and agents, you're gonna burn through the amount of executions you get, right? 15, 2,500 sounds like a lot, but if you're running it all the time, day after day, you're gonna burn through that and you're gonna have to pay N8N more and more. Instead, if you're in charge of the compute, there's much cheaper options out there. I'm gonna show you two of them. And the second reason is security. You might not wanna use N8N's cloud. You might wanna have a little more control over what that server looks like in the actual configurations. So those are the two reasons, security and price. I think price is the big one for most people. It's just a little bit harder to self-host, which is why I'm creating this video. It's not overly complex. You just have to do a few steps, and in the end, you'll save a few bucks. Now, do you need to self-host? No, don't feel like you have to. If you're totally fine paying the 20 bucks a month and you're not running into trouble with the current plan you're on with NNN, go ahead and use NNN. You're not really gonna lose anything. So when it comes to the community version that you'll be self-hosting on, do we lose anything with that? Not really. There's some specific variables, but those tend to be more in like the enterprise plan. So for your normal everyday user, you shouldn't see any sort of difference. You just have to kind of go through these guides, set it up, and also it's on you to do the update. All right, so like I mentioned before, we're gonna have two options here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it in DigitalOcean, and I'm gonna show you how to do it over here in Render. So of those two, I would say Render is the easiest. It honestly takes a few clicks, and we're gonna be able to knock this out in a few minutes. So if you just want to self-host, but you want the least technically demanding way to do it, I would suggest render. So on the other side, we have DigitalOcean. It's a little harder to set up. We're going to be responsible for creating our domain and doing that whole process. But at the end of the day, you get a little more bang for your buck. So if you want to self-host and you want the cheapest option, I think DigitalOcean is the way to go. And then if you just want something very simple, I suggest render. So I'm going to show you how to do both of them. We're going to start with render because it's the easiest. And then we'll move over to DigitalOcean. Okay, so let's start with render. So go to render.com, create an account, and then it will take you to this dashboard. You should see something that says web services. So we're gonna create a new web service. You're gonna do existing image, and then you're gonna go into Google and you're gonna search for Docker N8N. You should see this thing in Docker Hub that says NNIO slash N8N. Click into that, and this is where, you're, where we're gonna pull the Docker image. You're going to scroll down and you're going to find this thing it says docker.n8n.io slash n8n, etc. Now, what is a Docker image? A Docker image is essentially like a snapshot of the current version of n8n with all of its code, all of its configuration. They put it into a box and that's a Docker image. So we got that. And now we're going to go to here. We're going to paste this in there. Essentially, what we're saying is, hey, take this image, deploy it onto your cloud. So don't worry about credentials, hit connect, name it whatever you want, and then you have sort of your instance types, right? So this is what we're paying for, right? So we do have a free option. The downside with the free option, understand that it's going to spin down after a certain amount of inactivity. So if you don't use it for like, I think a day or so, it's essentially gonna shut that server off. Like it still exists, but if you wanna use it again, it has to turn it back on, run it back up. And truthfully, you don't get much CPU or RAM. So I suggest at least doing the starter. If you want, start with free, mess around with it, and always upgrade. But that's what I would start off with for sure. And you always have options if you want to up your game. Um, don't worry about advanced settings unless you kind of know what you're doing. And then we'll do deploy web service. So if you hit something that wasn't free, it's going to ask for your card. I'm actually just going to do free for the demo. And then it's going to start deploying it. So um, you'll see this in progress. It's just going to go through all this. It'll take about five minutes and then it will be ready to go. All right, eventually get to this part. It should have taken like five, six minutes. And we have our instance ready to go right up here. So just click into that. And again, we're on the free tier, so it might take a second. But yeah, from here, we just set it up. Um, sure, next. You can put this stuff in here if you want. Yeah, get me my eight features for free. And boom, there's N8N. 
Now, understand when you do the self-host, if you're coming from the web version, you are going to have to redo your credentials, which is a pain in the butt. Um, so just get ready for that. But everything else works the same, right? Like I can um, take all my workflows, import them into here, right? No issue at all. Um, the credential part's just the part that's annoying. So just like that, super easy with render, like you saw you are now self-hosting NADN, in this case, for $0 across the board. So now let's take a look at DigitalOcean. But oh, hold on, before we do that, let's go through how you would actually update this, right? Um, all you would do is come up here where it says manual deploy, deploy rate latest reference, right? That is what would allow you to actually update it to the newest NADN version. So render, very cool, very easy just a little less powerful than DigitalOcean, which we'll look at now. All right, so sign up with whatever account you want. And when you sign up, it is gonna ask for a credit card. It's not gonna charge you anything right away. Just put that information in there. All right, once you give them your credit card, you're gonna see this page, go to the control panel. Then once you get here, you're gonna go create, go to droplets. Choose whichever region's closest to you. Um, and then you can keep all this the same Ubuntu. We'll do the basic plan and we need to choose an image. So go to marketplace right here and then just type in NADN. This will come up and we're just gonna have that selected. So basic is fine. And then here you're gonna choose the amount of compute power you want. Regular is totally fine. And then six, month, six bucks a month should do it. And again, you have options for more compute if you feel like you need it. Um, go down. So create a root password. Um, you will need to remember this one. Um, also note it's kind of a complicated password you have to put in there. Um, and then don't worry about the advanced options. And that's going to be it. Then just do create droplet. And now it's just spinning up um, the NADN image, just like we did before with searching for the Docker image inside render. So we'll wait for this to finish and then we'll continue. All right, once that's done, just click on your droplet. It'll take you to this page. And now we need to set up a domain, right? Because unfortunately this doesn't work as easily as render, which has all that done for you on the back end, where it just gives you the link right away. Instead, we have to essentially create a domain and then hook it up. So this goes to that domain. So if you already have a domain name, that's great. It's gonna be really easy, but maybe you don't. And so you're literally gonna have to go out and buy one and we'll do that right now. So the website that you can use, um, that's pretty cheap is just called namecheap.com. Um, it's legit. <laughs> so basically you just put in a name, you search for it, and then it's gonna come up with a bunch of possible, um, you know, domains for you ranging in how expensive they are, right? If I wanted chaseeye.inc, that's $1,500 a year, no thanks. But there's some cheaper options, right? Like this one's six bucks a year. So what you'll do is find a domain you like, add it to the cart, pay for it. And then once you have that, then I'll show you what we do next. All right, so once you pay for your new domain, don't feel like you need to buy any of the advanced DNS stuff. Don't buy any of the other options. Just get the basic package so you get your domain as cheap as possible. You'll then see this dashboard page once you log back in. So you're going to find the domain you got. For me, it was chaseai.site. And then you're just going to go to manage. Once you click on your domain, this probably won't be active yet. Um, that's because you're going to have to confirm your registration details. So make sure you do that. It should be just an email. And then don't worry about any of this other stuff. Um, name servers, just have that set to name cheap basic DNS. And then go ahead and go to advanced DNS. So here is where we're going to have to add a new record and your record needs to look just like mine. You're just going to click add new record. It's going to be an A record. Host will be NADN and then your IP address is going to be what we saw in DigitalOcean. So here we are in DigitalOcean. This is the IP address you need to copy this IPv4. So just copy that in there and then set TTL set it to automatic or one minute is fine. Save that and then you should be all set. Once you've confirmed everything, it should say active. Now, once you have it to active, we're gonna go back into DigitalOcean. 
All right, once we're back inside of DigitalOcean, go to console. You're going to get this to open up. This is a terminal. Very scary, coders only. <laughs> but for subdomain, we're just going to leave it default, and you're going to hit enter. Next, next is going to ask for your subdomain, and that's just what we bought, right? So for me, it's chaseai.site. Hit enter. Then it's asking for an email address. Um, doesn't really matter which one you put. Um, just something that you know. Hit enter. And then would you like to configure a time zone? Yes or no? Um, I'm just going to put no for now. Feel free to do that. And then what it's doing is it's now it's going to Docker automatically, pulling that image just like we did in render and setting it all up. So this will take a couple minutes and then I will show you what to do next once it's complete. All right, now it's done and it gives us the website to go to. So just copy it and we're going to check it out. Again, it's going to say dangerous site. Don't worry about that right now. Details. Um, just like before, fill this out with whatever. Whatever, we don't care. Sure, send it to me. And boom, there you go. You are now self-hosted with DigitalOcean. Not too bad. Same stuff as before. You're going to have to redo your credentials, but you can upload all of your old workflows. Now, how do we update our image if we become out of date with NADN and we're using DigitalOcean? Well, let me show you. So what you're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the console. And what I have up here is I just have um, some of the commands that we'll be using. So I'm gonna have these commands inside of the school for you to check out, but you're gonna have to put these into here and essentially it's going to take you to the right folder and then pull the latest updates from um, Docker. So the first thing we have to do is we have to go into the uh, Docker compose file. So I just pulled that from here and just right click and paste. And so what that is doing, that command is just finding the right folder for us, which is the NADN Docker caddy folder. Now, once we're there, we now need to go to that folder. So that's what the CD um, right here does that's just changing the directory um so now we should be there well oops that was the wrong one on command so it's actually going to be this guy cd opt so how did i get that so if you see this first one right here where we had to find the correct file the line below it right you're getting a little coding class right now this is the directory, the folder that it's in, right? We wanted to find this Docker Compose file. It's in this folder. So the next command you have to do is going to be CD, which is change directory. And then we just put this in there, this slash op slash edit and Docker caddy. Again, I'll put this in the school. And if you ever get confused, like a troubleshooting tip, like you get this far and it's not working with the school, just take a screenshot of this feed it to Claude, feed it to chat, GPT, explain what you're trying to do, and it's going to help you out. So do that. We're now in the correct folder. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to pull that image from Docker. So just going to paste in the next command, hit enter, pulling it. Okay, we got what we needed. Next, we need to apply the update. So that's the next command. And all done. So it was already up to date, so there really wasn't much for it to do, but that's how we do it. Now, as you saw, not super hard, but still a little more technical, a little more scary for the non-coders out there um, working with DigitalOcean. But we get it, like I said, a little more power for, for what we're paying for. So um, that's how you update it. So those are the two different ways you can self-host. Hopefully that was easy enough for you to follow. Like I said, I'll have a bunch of links um, in the school. I'll also link to and it ends official docs on it, although I will say their docs are a little out of date. Um, also, there might be some questions that how do I locally host, like on your actual computer? Um, let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in learning, because we could also do a lesson going down that path where all the internet stuff never leaves your actual, you know, device. Um, but self-hosting, I think, hits the nail on the head for a lot of people. Um, and so Check it out. Like I said, if nothing else, check out the render free tier just to kind of get some reps on it and see if you like it. So um, yeah, as always, let me know in the comments what you think, and I will see you around.